So we took Alan off and Teddy and we gave Ian Wright. I thought Ian Wright did well. I thought Darren Anderson was excellent today. His use of the ball was, was superb. I don't know why uh, there was a section of supporters at some stage digging him out and I can't understand that. For was one. that a London thing, do you think? I do not know. Uh, and there's other London players playing out there. It was disappointing to hear him talking, you know, singing about Manchester United as well. When we play for England, uh, we play for England and we play for the pride of playing for England. Uh, nothing to do with their clubs. Paul Gascoigne came on. Were you pleased with him? He seemed to change the game a little bit for you. Couldn't see Comsa. He'd done some good things and he, he gave the ball away. And uh, you know that was difficult for us when you know we were put on the back back foot a, a few times. Paul came on and done some good things as well. So it was a 50-50 a for him. Uh, the spell that he had on there. But he put a stint in and he's uh, he'd be a little bit fitter for it and further down the line. As a coach who's won the World Cup, where must England improve? No, I don't want to speak about the, the, the English team. I think they are good. Uh, Glenn Hoddle has a lot of options. You see, he lined up one team and still had 
uh, guys Conan the bunch, Ferdinand, a lot of good players. So even sometimes it's difficult for the coach to establish one team. I do not have this kind of problem. We have only a few number of players. So that's, uh, I think we play good. They cannot be blamed. They create the chances to, to win the game. We create as well. I think it was a good game, although the 0-0 never it's pleased, but there was a lot of chance in both sides. Great result. Congratulations. Thank you. So two games to come and we'll see them next week live. But before that, of course, there's more business at Wembley to attend to. Uh, tomorrow, 2 o'clock, Sky Sports 2, it's the second division playoff final between Grimsby and Northampton, followed on Bank Holiday Monday by Charlton and Sunderland. The first division playoff, one or the other, will be joining us in the Premiership. That's Sky Sports 2, Bank Holiday Monday at 2 o'clock. Then it's the four-team tournament in Morocco for the King Hassan Cup. Wednesday at 5, Morocco play England. France meet Belgium, again on Sky Sports 2, and on Friday, it's the other way around, it's Belgium against England, France again Morocco, Sky Sports 2, Friday at 6. So England are off on their travels, we wish them well, and we'll join up with them again on Wednesday. Goodbye until then. Two teams who've tasted glory at Wembley in the recent past contest this afternoon's second division playoff final. Favourites Grimsby won the auto windscreen shield here last month, while Northampton are aiming to become only the second team to secure promotion via the playoffs in successive seasons. The new Citroen Zara Coupe. It's the only thing to be seen in. So, why wear anything else? Comets are still headed for Earth. Oceans will rise, cities will fall, but hope will survive. Deep impact. You know why you're here, so where were you? I told you. You don't want to change your story? No. I took a TVR Serbra. Ran the Nissan Skyline and a Toyota Supra. That's right. And you spun the TVR. Yes! There's no record of a missing TVR or a crash with a Skyline or a Supra that night. Do you want to change your story? When we think about making our savings grow on the stock market, many of us won't even dip our toe in the water because we think it's complicated, only for the rich, and we might lose everything. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Change the way you save. For the Advanced Savings Account Pack, call 0800 626262. Buy spectacles from our 6495 price range or above and get a pair of prescription sunglasses absolutely free. Specsavers opticians, like you can believe your eyes. There we were, in the middle of nowhere, starving. So he disappears. He's gone for hours. I'm getting really hacked off. When he comes back, with a bottle of champagne, a bag of chips and a jar of Hellman's, open fire, champagne and chunky chips. 
would have married in that light. If he hadn't already asked Sally. Oh. <laughs> Elman's the only mayonnaise. Hi, come in and see what we've got at low-key season prices. There's something for everyone. Heat guns, sanders. Great for getting all the old paint off. Tulux paint mixing. We can mix hundreds of colours, even masonry paint. Hardwood doors and the wood stain. A whirlpool oven, hob and hood. These powerful electric showers are at low cases and prices. And so is the Sheldon bathroom suite and it includes a tap. The key season prices. If you find them locally for less, we'll refund double the difference. You can do it. When you do it. Do it. They in fact know what people want. There's no better bacon. Here tomorrow at 2, Charlton play Sunderland for promotion to the Premiership. While on Sports 1 at 7.30, there's live Super League. He's done it! This is Sky Sports 2. Going live. 3, Tampa. 2, Activate. 1, we're live. Duckhams, sponsors of the Nationwide League, on Sky. When it comes to Wembley, Grimsby have been there, seen it, done it. Likewise, Northampton Town. Now, Alan Buckley and Ian Atkins are desperate to do it again. Wembley Way is heaving. More than 60,000 are here today for the second division playoff final. It took Grimsby Town 120 years to reach Wembley for the first time. Now their supporters are back for the second time in five weeks. The auto windscreen shield safely locked away in the Blundell Park trophy cabinet. But will that famous old ground by the sea be hosting first division football next season? This lot certainly hope so. Cobblers is what that lot would say. 12 months ago, Northampton were a third division side. Three hours from now, they could be back in the first. A record 40,000 plus Northampton fans expected, hoping to celebrate the completion of a remarkable transformation. It's gonna be very tight though. Precious little separates these two sides. Well, this is the Northampton team arriving. Familiar territory for them, of course. <laughs> Relaxed smiles at the moment. And a fairly happy looking manager, Ian Atkins. What a job he has done over the last couple of years. Remember, this team is still in voluntary receivership. There's Jason Dazelle, one of their more experienced campaigners. Will he figure today, I wonder? He's only a substitute, last time out. And there's Chris Freestone, their 75,000 pound signing from Middlesbrough. And this is Grimsby, back in town, just five weeks after that storming success in the order windscreen shield. First man off the coach there, by the way, was Jack Lester, who missed that game. He was suspended. There's Kevin Donovan, who's had such a tremendous season. And Alan Buckley, back at Grimsby after 18 difficult months at West Brom. What a return for him. Aidan Davison, the goalkeeper. And Mark Lever, last man off the coach. There he is. 
Well, it's a grey Wembley day, but I'm sure the Mariners and the Cobblers will spice things up. The final hurdle for them, the hardest point at which to fall. My guests today are Tommy Widrington, Grimsby's joint record signing, whose season has been scuppered by injury, and the Division Two Manager of the Year, John Ward of Bristol City, who went up automatically and in some style. And talking of styles, John, we have two teams with very different philosophies today, don't we? Yeah, we do. I don't think Alan will ever sort of abolish his ways of playing the game. He's very much a passing manager, wants the team to pass, and, and, and maybe, if, if, if I could be critical, he perhaps overpasses sometimes. Uh, Ian's probably had less resources to work with his side and, and will openly admit sometimes that he sets out to frustrate the opposition, but he's got a bit of power and pace at the front of his team as well and he uses that to good effect. But the Cobblers aren't just cloggers, are they? No, they're not. They don't, they don't have two years like they've just had if they do that. They're, they're good players and they're, they're, they're very well organised and, and, and Tommy will tell you as well, I think Grimsby are a bit, bit, bit concerned about the set plays against them as well. They're very powerful in those areas of the field, but you can only make those useful if you get in those areas. So they do get forward well and they do use, use all their strengths. Is that a major concern for Grimsby with the set pieces today, Tommy? Well, I'm sure all over the pitch they, they're by far and away taller than us in every department. They've got a couple of tall strikers, big centre-offs, and we're not really a tall side because, as John says, we like to keep the ball on the floor. And I feel if we can get the ball on the floor and get some passing movements going of our own, they'll, they'll struggle to keep up with us. You've been down with the boys this morning. What's the feeling like in the dressing room? Well, it's remarkably relaxed. Like you said in your intro, there's, it's only five weeks since they were here before. But um, we, we've got to remember that Northampton were here only 12 months ago and tasted uh, the sweet smell of success when they come up to this division and I'm sure their fans, all 40,000 of them, will be expecting the same again this season. Well, we're halfway through this Wembley bank holiday football feast. No goals for England or Saudi Arabia yesterday. This is what happened in the third division playoff on Friday night. Headed down here towards Forbes. Last year, Colchester lost at Wembley on penalties. Now they have a penalty, which David Gregory will take to try and put them ahead in the playoff final. He withstood the pressure of the semi-final to score from the spot. Can David Gregory do it at Wembley as well? Yes, he can. It's in off the post. Colchester in the lead. Gone right to the back to Gittins, and right across, Watson shot, and then Gittins blasts it over the top. Here's Buckle, and suddenly there's an opening for David Gregory, and Gibbs came back with a challenge. I think Colchester still having a half-time cut of tee up. Here's McFarlane, and it might fall to Gibbs. And it's come to Gurney. Gibbs, another check on the watch, and Colchester are there. Steve Wignall's side have earned promotion to the second division. So a golden night for Colchester on Friday. Which team will be celebrating this afternoon, I wonder? Well, our reporter Alan Bentley has been talking to some of the key performers. Chris, you were here a couple of times with Middlesbrough, but as I understand it, you didn't get on. No, I mean, it, it was uh, disappointing all around because we lost both the finals when I came here last. Uh, hopefully it'll be different today. I mean, how much are you looking forward to this? Oh, it's been a dream of mine since I was a little kid. I mean, every, everybody wants the, a chance to play at Wembley and with any luck I'll get mine today. John, there's not too many players who score with an overhead kick at Wembley. Can you remind us of the circumstances? Uh, I remember when it was about five minutes ago when the, the gaffer uh, shot on the bench like this five minutes ago. And uh, we had a free kick, and I always remember like Prince Iverson, he's just headed it back to me, and I'm just like, you know, like instinction, just knocked it over the, you know, the top corner. Lee, you know what it's like to score here, but you know what it's like to lose here as well. I mean, what did that feel like? Um, well, after playing so well on the day, obviously uh, very disappointed. Um, played ever so well for, I thought, an hour, and, uh, you know, the feeling's just dejection, and what can you say? There's nothing you can say to the lads or anything. You just. That's it. You've lost and you've got to go on to the next, unfortunately. But you did play in the auto windscreen shield. Although the fact that you came off, did that slightly take the gloss of it for you personally? No, no. I mean, it was a terrific result for us. Um, it was a warmer day than today, so hopefully I can last a bit longer. And um, hopefully it won't go into extra time and we can win it within 90 minutes. Kevin, 20 goals this season. What's been the secret of your success? What's changed? I'm not sure really, uh, I'm playing with a good set of lads, good footballers, uh, they've created the chances for me, so maybe that's something to do with it. 
And of course, you got the goal that effectively got Grimsby here as well. Well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, we've played a full season, so I mean, everybody's contributed. But as you say, that was the last one that got us here to the final. And uh, of course, you've also played here before and scored here before. What, what was that like? Good, tremendous, good feeling. A uh, long time ago now, about five or six years ago, but it was one of the best feelings I've had in football. Well, they're all experienced campaigners now, and it does have to help, John, that Grimsby were here just five weeks ago, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it does, and uh, Tommy will say that, but even so, like Northampton know about this place as well and got themselves a win, as you said, a year ago. But uh, I think coming within five weeks, you, you don't have to bring your players to look around the place or see what it's like or taste the atmosphere. It's still fresh for them, and uh, that'll be a help to Grimsby. This is different, though, isn't it, Tommy? I mean, the order wind screen was a great day out for both sides, win or lose, but the losers today go home with their tails between in their legs as we saw Torquay go home on Friday night. Well that's right, um, we've, we've played 46 games in the league this season and as it happens this year in, in this particular playoff final it's the third and fourth teams that are playing but I'm not such a big fan of it when it, when it occurs that the, the team in sixth place who possibly have five or six points less than the team in third place still have that chance of escaping out of, the, out of that division. I mean we, we came down into this division last season uh, finishing third from bottom and there was no escape route for us. We were down as the third, third from bottom team and I feel this season that we finished third from top and possibly we deserve the right to get back into the first division. Fair point. Well, Grimsby have been in the playoff places for the last three months of the regular campaign, but both teams ended the season poorly, so confidence wasn't sky high when they went into the playoff semi-finals. Grimsby travelled to Craven Cottage to face Kevin Keegan's Fulham and fell behind on the stroke of half-time. Paul Groves committed that foul. Peter Beardsley completed the task. Fulham already down to ten men by then following Paul Moody's sending off. And a sloppy back pass by Wayne Collins allowed David Smith to steal in and level at one all. Paul Peskis Holiday was sent off early in the second leg at Blundell Park and more defensive frailty from Fulham let in Kevin Donovan to score what proved to be the decisive goal. Northampton's semi-final opponents were Bristol Rovers. First leg at the Memorial Ground, first strike to the home side on the half hour. Ian Sampson the offender, Peter Beadle the scorer. Rovers doubled their lead seven minutes later. Frankie Bennett with that header. And the Cobblers were three behind just after the break. Barry Hales was allowed to wriggle through the defence to slot home. And that looked to be that. But 15 minutes from the end, John Gale lobbed the stranded keeper Andy Collett to salvage some hope for the return game at the Sixfield Stadium. Carl Heggs opened the scoring there, tapping in from close range late in the first half. Then it was Ian Clarkson's turn, his effort levelling the scores on aggregate. The party celebrations were warming up. And the winning goal came 13 minutes from time, Ray Warburton scoring his first of the season to set up a return trip to Wembley for Ian Atkins' team. Wonderful night for Northampton and we can now hear from both sets of supporters, starting with the Mariners. Really looking forward to it. There's only 20,000 of us here, but against two to one, we'll outshout them all the way to Division One. We, we won't be going to Manchester City next year, Northampton will be. Oh, we're the best, we're the best team in the division. No, there's no question, is there? I mean, we should be up there right in the top, Division One. Today's going to be a case of a game of a passing team versus a direct team and the victory is going to be for football today. We play here more times than anyone. <laughs> yeah! We're so regular, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah! It costs us a fortune to travel here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be here next season as well. Physical side of things, I think we're a lot stronger than them. Um, we've got a good, solid defence and yeah. will to win, really. I think Grimsby are a better football inside than Northampton, but Northampton played really well against Bristol Rovers um, when they came back from 3-1 down. And I hope that if they play like, like that, then I think they've got a, a good chance today. Well, Ian Atkins, he's got a team together on a budget of next to nothing. And over the last four or five seasons, what they've done from going out of business to two consecutive years at Wembley, there's no way we're going to lose. 
Well, there really is a terrific atmosphere inside the ground this afternoon, and expectation levels have risen quite remarkably for both sets of supporters, haven't they, John? Yeah, they have. I mean, particularly as you see the guy there talking about Northampton's fortunes, how they've changed in the last sort of two years. It's fantastic what Ian's done there, and he's done it on a low budget, as you say. And I think that's a fantastic effort from him. But as Alan's principles of play, and he's bought players to play the way he wants to do. And and I knew last year when the, when I saw them play in, in, in the first division that they would be a threat this year in, in in our league, and it's been a tough one for them. Tommy, tell me about the Grimsby fans. I actually stood on the terraces during the first leg of the semi-final at Fulham. And they struck me as being quite a pessimistic bunch, even though they managed to get a, a one-all draw in London. Is that being a little bit unfair? Well, I think so. I mean, we didn't take that many fans down to, to Fulham, if I remember correctly. And Fulham were really on top uh, early on in the game. And maybe they were a little bit subdued. But, I mean, they're very, they're very optimistic. As that man there said, we'll be back again next year. Well, I don't know about that. But, you know, twice in one year is fantastic for them because they're a loyal bunch of fans. You know, we don't get massive gates like in Manchester City who are going to be on a different planet next season in this division. So um, I'm pleased for the fans because they stuck by us after the relegation. In fact, our gates have gone up this season because we've had quite a good season. And can they outshout Northampton even though they're, they're very much outnumbered? Well, they're a loud bunch up there, you know, and um, when they do get behind the, uh, the team, they're, they're really they really can feel it on the pitch there, so I hope they do try, but two to one's a, a, a good start, especially at Wembley, because the, the noise is generated across the pitch. But I'm sure they'll be uh, singing at the top of their voices. I'm sure they will be. Let's get all the team news from our reporter, Alan Bentley. Yes, thanks a lot, Marcus. Both sides have bags of Wembley experience, as we've heard, and no great surprises in either camp. So let's get straight on with it, starting with Grimsby Town. And of course, if we start with them, well, the one change from the auto windscreen shield was Jack Lester. He was suspended that day. In fact, he didn't even come down here. He's up front alongside Lee Nogan, who lost here for Reading a few years ago. In goal, well, Aidan Davison has kept 30 clean sheets this season. Mark Lever, he's hoping for a fairy tale end to his testimonial year. And Tony Gallimore is OK after a knee scare, and his wife gave birth this week. Wayne Burnett, remember, he got the golden goal against Bournemouth while Donovan and Groves have 32 goals between them, 20 for Kevin Donovan. And on the bench, Kingsley Black, he's looking for a seventh Wembley appearance. Switching across then to Northampton Town, and Woodman, Clarkson, Frayne, Samson, Warburton and Peer figured in last season's playoff final. Peer was substitute that day. Veteran John Frayne scored the dramatic late winner against Swansea, and Carl Heggs incidentally played for Swansea that day. It's a fourth Wembley appearance for Colin Hill. He's won and lost player finals. And top scorer Chris Freestone. He was signed on Christmas Eve for Middlesbrough. He was in the Borough squad for last season's Cup final. Veteran Jason Dizel. He has to settle for a place on the bench. That's it, Marcus. Back to you up top. Thank you, Alan. Some quite experienced players on the uh, respective benches. No, no big surprise in that Grimsby starting lineup, is there? Not really. I would say that was uh, possibly the manager's strongest say present company accepted actually <laughs> but, uh, but I mean the, the one possibility I thought he may have gone with was the, the height and the, the robust figure of Steve Livingston as anybody seen the windscreen final he came on and made a real difference to, to the game and as we said before in all departments Northampton are bigger and are stronger than us but you know sometimes it doesn't matter how big you are they say the bigger they are the harder they fall and like I said we want, we've got to get the ball down and get our passing movements going and get our wingers the ball and that's the way we can get at them. Uh, and Jason Dazelle on the bench for Northampton, how, how does he fit into the side? Because we've said they're quite direct and he's a, he's yeah. a fairly intricate sort of player. Yeah, I think he's he? used him as, as just in behind people at the front, but I think it looks a real positive lineup from, from Northampton there with Gale and Heggs and Freeston at the front of this side, who are all very much forward players. So it, it looks as if Ian's going to try and get, get his ball into the front and work off the off Big John and get the pace round about him. But yeah, Jason's played in behind a little bit and passes and keeps the game going. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they, how they attack this one now. Well, the Northampton fans have been flocking down the M1 all morning. Remember, some 40,000 of them expected. They made this exact journey 12 months ago. They're in good voice. Also on their way down, the Mayor of Northampton and the MP for Northampton South. Two very proud men, aren't you? We are oh, absolutely indeed. through. So yeah. Somebody said if we cut our heads off, we'd probably be claret and white all the way through. So very proud takes them up on that but uh, <laughs> no the only way is up it's a fantastic town we're very proud of it and, and these people deserve everything yes. they get and yeah, if you lose fantastic. tears before bedtime not even we should still be happy not but still I have a yeah. we shan't think about losing at this you know, moment whatever happens we're on the way up four yeah. years ago the cobblers nearly went out of existence since yes. then we haven't even looked back That's and right. we just keep going forward yes. keep going forward all the while well, it's a three o'clock kickoff at Wembley this afternoon. A crowd of around 65,000 expected. Grimsby starters' favourites. Their fans are cautious, though. They often say 
They're only singing when they're fishing. They've had plenty to celebrate recently, though. The spotlight is on them when we return. the challenge of Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. The pride of the British Isles against the might of the Southern Hemisphere. Now that challenge is about to begin. See Ireland's first game in South Africa next Saturday at 2 on Sky Sports 3. We see... We hear... We feel, we can even sense things. But for some reason, some of us sense more than others. Someone once told Pete he was a dead ringer for Ian Wright. Since then, he's been convinced he is Ian Wright. Until he tries to play. At Booper, we never forget there's only one Pete Bradley. That's why we've got top sports physiotherapists. You're amazing. We'll help you stay that way. It's deep down there. You can sense it. It'll beat the cold. New Mobile One, the world's most advanced engine oil. It'll stand the heat. It's with you wherever you go. You can feel it. New Mobile One Zero W40. It will protect your car. And it will protect you. Mobile One. Feel the difference. One of these musicians suffers from diarrhea. But thanks to a brand new remedy, Chewable Imodium Plus, it needn't disrupt his life. One dose works with your body to stop diarrhea and help restore your normal balance. To get on with your day, get new Imodium Plus. Technology today moves in three dimensions. Introducing new Protector 3D from Wilkinson Sword. Its wire-wrapped blades now glide, turn and tilt in a fluid three-way movement for the optimum balance of safety and closeness. Protector 3D from Wilkinson Sword. The feel of smart design in a fresh new line of performance toiletries. I put my savings with a bank which gives me a high rate of interest. And where my money is always in easy reach. Standard Life Bank. Opening an account is this easy. Call 0345 55 56 57 or speak to your independent financial advisor. Protection, or they could leave vulnerable areas exposed to the pain of sensitive teeth. Sensodyne contains trickle sand to help keep my gums healthy. Sensoguard to relieve the pain and improved levels of fluoride. Sensodyne helps stop the pain and helps stop it coming back. Sensodyne, triple protection for sensitive teeth and gums. Does your mouth rinse leave you? For something more sensitive, try Sensodyne Gentle Mouth Rinse and a Sensodyne Gentle Toothbrush the gentler way to start your day. There's a bird's eye view of the Twin Towers and some very precisely parked buses and inside it's filling up all the time. We expect 60 to 65,000 this afternoon. More international football on Wednesday when England play Morocco in Casablanca in the King Hassan Cup. Another chance for Glenn Hoddle to finalise his squad for the World Cup. Wednesday 5 o'clock on Sky Sports 2. Right now, though, here on Sky Sports 2, it's the second division playoff final between Grimsby and Northampton. Now, honours have been even in recent meetings. Look at that, though. Wembley on his head. Quite bizarre. Sunglasses as well. And the flags out in force amongst the Northampton supporters with that very distinctive maroon colour that makes this occasion such a colourful one. Now, as I was going to say, before that hat appeared, honours have been even 
over the years. Three wins apiece in the last seven games. Northampton's first ever league game, by the way, was against Grimsby back in August 1920. That's an interesting little fact for you. And the Mariners won 2-0 that day. And I'm sure they settled for a repeat of that. Tommy Widrington and John Ward are my guests this afternoon. Now, Tommy, you played in the first league meeting between the two sides back in October. What stands out from that, uh, that encounter? Well, like we've, we've touched on before, there's a, a huge um, difference in styles of players. We showed there, that's our right winger coming in and, and working off the centre forward and scoring a, a goal of pure football, really. And um, whereas Northampton are a little bit more direct. Again, you see, we're in amongst the, the balls on the floor. It hasn't left the ground yet, and it still hasn't. But I think you'll see that the goals they scored, mm. um, there we are, they're quite direct. Route one, from, from, route one. From First one from a penalty. I mean, you can't knock that. You know, like, like we said, people work to the resources they have. We've got great footballers in our, in our side. They've got big, strong lads who are probably, you know, their, their fault is in the, in the air. So they play to their strengths, and again, an aerial ball and we haven't dealt with it. Nigel Clegg with the winner from the set piece. So a rare setback for Grimsby then. There's been precious few of those this season. And this week, Alan Bentley caught a couple of Mariners. I'm gone fishing. I got me a line. <laughs> Nothing I do is going to make the difference. Two, I would say. Come on! Thank you. So I'm taking the time. Can I ask you, first of all, looking back to the auto windscreen shield, what are your abiding memories of the day? Obviously, um, the goal, you know. Um, it's going to live in my memory forever. Great day, great occasion, you know. Um, hopefully we can go back there and repeat the performance. What do you see has been the key to success on Sunday? Um, it's going to be very difficult, you know, two teams going for one prize to play in the first division next year. But we play, we've got two different styles, we like to pass it, um, I believe Northampton like to get the ball forward as quick as possible. Um, both can be very successful ways, but hopefully ours will come up on top on Sunday. And what about you? It seems as though your career has had something of a kickstart since you arrived at Grimsby. Yeah, you know, to, to come to, uh, came to Grimsby uh, three or four months ago and to think of going to Wembley once was, would have been magnificent, but to get there twice in the space of two months is uh, just great, you know. And, and yeah, I've had a bit of a stop start in my career, but hopefully things are looking up now. Aidan, we've been a fantastic season for you, hasn't it? Yeah, overall. But then again, it can all hinge on this one game. Um, if, we, if we finish the season now, then we'd say, yeah, it's been fantastic uh, overall. But, I mean, the game that's coming up, it's vital. It's crucial. And this marvellous record of clean sheets, how many is it now? It's 33. Is that a club record? It, I think 27 was a club record. Uh, so we've gone past that, which is nice. Uh, I'm proud of that. But uh, it's obviously not just down to me. It's down to not only the back four, but um, everybody else in front of us. You know, we, we defend as a team. Uh, so, you know, happy with that. Now when you speak to strikers, they all, always seem conscious of statistics, who they've scored against, how many they've got. Are you the same as a keeper? Well, I think people judge you on clean sheets. But... Um, I'm personally, if I can go out and if I know I'm going to win the game, then I'll be happy even if I, if I concede one. Obviously, clean sheets are a bonus, but uh, at the end of the day, winning is the most important thing for me. And finally, how's your fishing? <laughs> I haven't caught a thing. <laughs> I'm still waiting. Catch us if you can. Catch us if you can. Come on. There we go. Nice big one coming in here. Big one. Look at this beauty. Hey! Come on there. That's what it's all about. Catch of the deer. Well, they didn't catch much then. I wonder if they'll snare this later on this afternoon. Defensively, Tommy, uh, it's been an outstanding season. As we heard from Aidan Davison, there 33 clean sheets is quite remarkable. That's an astonishing feat. I mean, uh, every every good football team is um, based on their defence, their foundations. Even the England side, you know, you have to have a very strong spine to your side, and we have. And we've got uh, Peter Andy's side and Mark Lever, who are, who've been nearly ever present. Paul Groves, our skipper in midfield, who, you know, he's worth 12 goals a season to year, and he's also very, very handy in our own box. 
and up the front he's, he's Lee Nogan hasn't missed too many games either so he's had a very good strong spine to the side and our wingers have been Mm. Fantastic, and yes. my fullbacks are very attacking. Ke Kevin Donovan, 20 goals, his best ever record this season. Scored, I think, for, for West Brom against Port Vale in the 93 playoff final. So he's been here and done it and obviously enjoys the big occasion. John. Yeah, Kevin's played at a high level as well, and he's a good footballer. I've seen, I mean, obviously, I've seen Grimsby twice when we played them, and I saw them play away at Bristol Rovers as well. And, the, and Kevin tore people apart in, in all those three games that I've seen, and Tom Hill has seen him do that a number of times. But for a, one of your wide players to get that quarter of goals is fantastic, you know. So he, he's more than just a wide player, he's, he's, a, he's a good end, end product man. Like Donovan, Paul Groves followed Alan Buckley back to Grimsby. The interesting thing about him, Tommy, in his first spell at the club, four years, never missed a game, yeah. and he's been ever present again this season. That, that's phenomenal. It is. I think he's 32. I'll be right in saying he's 32. He's a very fit lad. He's on any long distance running, he's by far and away a good couple of minutes ahead of most of the boys, even now. So it's, it's a testament to his own, um, the way he keeps himself away from football. So that's magnificent. Like I said, I think he's got a dozen or so goals as well. Mm. But good, touching back on Kevin Donovan, not to, not to be too detrimental to wingers, but he's much more than a winger you know wingers are your, your wide man who cross balls Kev's a lot more than that he can play up front he can play behind the front too he could even have a double in midfield so like you said he's a lot more of a, a finished product than just a winger plenty of options for the manager Alan Buckley and he is now talking to Alan Bentley Alan your 68th game of the season does that concern you at all not really now I think there's so much to play for so much at stake and I don't think tiredness in the players minds will come into it they just want to get out there and play. Now you're here just a couple of weeks ago. Will that experience be of benefit to you? I think so, but I mean, that was like a, a smashing day out for everybody. There's a lot more at stake this time. And in that sense, Northampton have got more experience than Grimsby Town at that, getting promotion last year here. You see it very much as a clash of styles today? Well, I suppose so. I mean, Ian's got his ideas and I've got my ideas. Uh, Nobody should say who's right or wrong. Both clubs have had a fantastic season, and let's hope it's a super game today. Now, when you came back here in your heart of hearts, did you think you'd have two Wembley appearances in one season? When I came back to Grimsby, I mean, it's, you couldn't have scripted it better than the way it's gone. But when I came here about four weeks ago, I knew we'd be back again. And how much are you looking forward to it? Uh, I don't know, really. A lot of people say how, much, how enjoyable it is. And I think I would imagine that that's everybody apart from a football manager that's got to sit there, you know. But it's a proud moment to take the players out at Wembley again. The important thing is now that we win. Thanks a lot, Alan. Thank you. Well, he had a rough time during his 18-month spell at West Brom, uh, but John, since going back, everything has fitted like a glove for him. Yeah, I think Grimsby and Alan suit each other, you know. He was there before, did really well, and, and I don't think they had too much hesitation to invite him back again. And as you've seen, the results since Alan's been there is that they've, they've, they've had success with it, and they, but they seem very comfortable with each other. But he's absolutely right about that bit, about oh, you've got to enjoy it. I don't think you do. He'll only enjoy it at five o'clock if they've won. And, and that's what it's all about. The enjoyment for the people watching the game, but for the players and the management, it's, it's about winning it. Yes, they had a very enjoyable time here five weeks ago, but this is the big one for those Grimsby supporters with their assorted hats. Remarkable headgear on display today. If you're going to go up, you may as well do it via the playoffs. Northampton did it last year. Can they do it again? opportunity too good to refuse imagine seeing a movie before it's released at the cinema and before it comes out on video don't tell me that there's something that you'd rather do than make love to me right now sky movies is proud to announce exclusives brand new films you can't see anywhere else except sky movies i don't understand all these films have never been seen before in the uk a selected few will be the world premiere the first time the film has ever been shown <laughs> Exclusives start soon on Sky Movies Screen 2 with the first ever British screening of Phoenix. It's a perfect crime! Starring Angelica Houston and Ray Liotta. Sky Movies exclusives. Remember, you saw it here first. And you want us to go and see a film?
got you a Right Guard commercial, mm. making a big epic Hollywood performance of Great Smelling. I can perform Great Smelling. Great. They also need a big epic Hollywood performance of Dryness. I could do Dryness. The thing is, they need Great Smelling mm. and Dryness together. Together? At the same time. Surely nothing on Earth could perform such a task. Right Guard Double Protection Aerosol. Drier and more fragrant than Deslinum. Nothing performs better. Balbon, what is this? Do not be fooled by its innocent exterior. For inside the mega trouble, one encounters an exquisite experience that verges on the scandalous. Stop. A luxuriant chocolate truffle nestling seductively at the heart of creamy vanilla ice cream. The delirium of pleasure received in its devouring is quite <gasps> unprecedented. Oh, stop. Your mega truffle is wicked. Yes, it is rather good, isn't it? Got a mint. Mint. Try this. It's even better. Wrigley's extra. Chewing gum. Trust me. If you like mints, you'll love them. Extra cool. Extra minty. Extra flavor. And chewing's great for your teeth. What do you think? Cool. Very cool. Really? Thanks. Wrigley's extra. Great for your teeth and all the great taste of a mint. Every time you start your car from cold. It takes a while for your engine to get full protection from its oil. Metal grinds against metal. The damage is permanent. Castrol GTX Magnatech works differently. Unique polarized molecules cling like a magnet, dramatically reducing engine wear. For protection from the moment you turn the key, ask your garage for Castrol GTX Magnatech. Buy a pair of glasses from Donald and Aitchison and get a pair of prescription sunglasses absolutely free. Perfect. We're back here tomorrow as Charlton and Sunderland go in search of that promised place in the Premiership. Two o'clock, Sky Sports 2. What a game that's going to be. And what a game we have on our hands this afternoon, the second division playoff final between the favourites, Grimsby, and the Clobbers, Cobblers, Cobblers, whatever you want to call them, Northampton, who are looking to go up via the playoffs for the second successive year. And the atmosphere is building all the time. The black and white stripes of Grimsby, a very long journey from the northeast, but Harry has made it and so have around 20,000 other Grimsby Town supporters. They were making plenty of noise three or four hours ago outside, and they're making even more now. But Northampton have some 40,000 people here, and they are <clears throat> desperate to repeat their success of 12 months ago. Still in voluntary receivership, don't forget, but what a transformation under Ian Atkins. Let's see what the bookies make of it today. Well, Grimsby are the six to four on favourites and Northampton 11 to 10. Well, they did it last year. Can they do it again? Ian Crocker reports. Just your average end of May at the Sixfield Stadium. Fans queuing up for their annual Wembley tickets. Players preparing for another trip to the Twin Towers. <laughs> Hard work this training, Lark. That's just watching it. Hmm, time for some lunch, I think. I suppose I could invite a few of the lads. Last year's goal scoring hero, John Frayne. Ian Clarkson looks in need of sustenance. And Dean Peer didn't need asking twice. Is the restaurant this way? Uh, on it. Good man. It's pasta and all things healthy for the players. <laughs> But not for the reporter. What was it like scoring the winning goal at Wembley, though? Because everybody dreams of that, don't they, when they're, when they're a kid? Oh, not again. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what it's like again. I've tried to describe it many times to different, different people, but you can't describe it. It's actually happened to you. Um, and then two seconds later, the ref blows up the final whistle. There's just uh, so many emotions going through it at the same time, isn't it? Is it better than sex, then, Colin? Things are sexy. I know the playoff goal is probably more recent in your mind, but. <laughs> Being married. <laughs> you know who often. <laughs> well, she thought the goal was better. <laughs> I 
and you managed to get a goal in the um, in the playoff second leg as well, which is quite an achievement. Oh yeah, I mean obviously I've been doing it in training for sort of 12, 13 years. <laughs> well, but uh, but uh, finally it's, it's actually happened in a, a, a game for me as well, yeah. So I was delighted really. And that's two in uh, two goals in seven games and, and two, two in 12 years. Two goals in 12 years. Yeah, two, two in, <laughs> well I mean I'm a great believer in statistics, can, can always tell a story. I mean you can say two in 12 years or you can say two in seven games. I mean it depends what how you want to word it. So if, 12, you, yeah, if you want to make me look half decent, <laughs> really. Yeah right, so, so Dean. Yeah. A bit of an award for you as well, this Sports Personality of the Month. Yeah, I think it was a award from a pub, so um, <laughs> obviously I must must spend a lot of time there. <laughs> but, uh, it's, very, it's unbelievable to have a, a sports, sports Personality of the Month for somebody who's no personality whatsoever. Yeah, <laughs> Player of the Month maybe, but personality. Be proud, <laughs> <well>. Trace description. <laughs>